This is the secret ingredient that makes our mashed potatoes better than any mashed potatoes you've ever eaten. Moist, flaking off the bone turkey. Oh. Mm. Oh my goodness, this is so stinking good, it's not even funny. This Thanksgiving dinner only cost me $30. Jack keeps saying all of his friends at school keep talking about all the dry turkey for Thanksgiving, and he's like, you know this turkey recipe, you should check it out. All right, there you have perfectly fluffy mashed potatoes. Now, what do I do with the gravy packet? I throw it away. This gravy is nasty. You don't wanna eat this gravy. You wanna eat homemade gravy, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. Super yummy and easy. This is absolutely the best pie crust you will ever eat. Oh my, that looks delicious. This is a very easy turkey recipe. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. You're gonna say, Tara, there's no way. No, this really is this easy. Okay, you ready? Turkey, let it defrost three days before Thanksgiving. So the Monday before Thanksgiving, take your turkey out and put it in the refrigerator. If you forget, and you remember, let's say Tuesday or Wednesday, you can set it on the counter for three or four hours, put it in the fridge, the next day take it out for three to six hours, let it defrost. This thing is frozen solid, so it's, it's not gonna grow bacteria or anything if you set it out on the counter for just a couple of hours, okay? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our turkey. I hope mine's defrosted. I don't know if I actually gave him enough time to get defrosted but we're gonna see. Now, I do not wash my turkey. What I do is I take it out, whoa, whoops. All right, now, you gotta get the giblets and the gravy pack it out. Yeah, see it's still semi-frozen. Mm. There, not too bad though. And the neck, where'd the neck go? Did they not give me a neck? Hello, hello in there. There's no neck. Huh, okay, well I didn't get a neck. So then what I do is I take the turkey juice and I very carefully pour it out into my sink, Ugh, just like so. Okay, now there's gonna be a little bit, that's okay. Okay, now all you're gonna do for seasoning is take one stick of salted butter. Now, this is the breast side. See how it makes a heart? And usually the little poppy thing is on the top. You actually wanna flip this over. So we're just gonna put the butter inside the cavity, just like that, and flip this puppy over. That way, all of the juices run down into the breast meat, which is the driest part of the turkey, and makes it super juicy. That's all you do. Just cover this with foil. If you don't have a pan that has a lid, I happen to have this 1950s roaster that I found at a yard sale for a dollar. Love this thing. All right, stick it in the oven. Dining on a Dime, volume one, page 240 is the recipe if you need it. But what you do is you put your turkey at 250 degrees for about the first hour. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it down to 200 degrees. And then you're gonna let it cook for 10 to 14 more hours. Now, this is not hard or complicated. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. I know I keep saying that, but seriously, people make this way harder than it needs to be. Two to three hours before you're ready to eat, Check your turkey. If it is falling off the bone, then just turn your heat down to 170 to 180, and that will keep your turkey warm until it's time for dinner. If it is not falling off the bone, turn your turkey up to 300 or 350 for an additional hour. Check it again. <clears throat> if it's still not done, leave it for another hour at around 300 to 350, it just kind of depends what you want to do. And then go in and check it again. Your turkey will be done. I promise you, it will be done. The bigger the turkey, the longer it's gonna roast. So if you have a super big turkey that you're feeding a family of 25 or 30, you're gonna want to put that turkey in the night before. Also, 
You can pre-cook this turkey if you want. Now, this is not a carving type turkey. If you want a carving turkey, use our recipe on page 253 for our roast sticky chicken or turkey right here, 253. If you want a carving one, now this one you carve in the kitchen, put it on a platter and serve it on the table. So if you want, you could pre-cook this ahead of time, put it in a reheatable pan, pour a little bit of the turkey juice over it, put it in the refrigerator and then just reheat it the next day. And it is just as yummy and delicious the next day if you need to. So this works great for like church potlucks or things like that. I always volunteer to bring the turkey to these things because this is the best turkey you will ever eat. If you guys watch my other channel and have used this turkey recipe, please let people know we're not crazy. This turkey recipe actually works because people don't believe us, it actually really works. I know that was super long, but you guys need to know all that information. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Just let it slow cook and you are gonna have perfect, tender, juicy, not dry turkey. Thank you for watching our entire video. We are going to give you our Dining on a Dime cookbook ebook volume number one free at livingonadime.com. Click on our shop, click on our ebooks, click on Dining on a Dime volume one, add it to your cart. When you go to check out, use the coupon code DINING1 and you will get our ebook absolutely free with no obligation and no strings attached. Visit us at livingonadime.com. Making pumpkin pie. The pie crust is on page 307 and the pumpkin pie is on page 318. You can see this was my grandma's recipe. This is absolutely the best pie crust you will ever eat. You will be kicking yourself for ever buying a store-bought pie crust if you make this homemade pie crust. This is mom's pie crust that she has used for 50 years and it is just super delicious. I don't even like pie crust. And this is the one that I will eat. Okay, we got our flour and then our salt. And our sugar. And then we have our shortening. Now, you must use shortening. If you want to use butter or margarine or whatever else, that's fine, but your pie crust is not going to turn out the same. It's not going to be as flaky and it's not going to be as fluffy if that's a pie crust. I mean, that sounds weird, but the shortening is imperative if you actually want it to taste really good. I mean, you can do butter if you want. If you like the butter flavor, you can add butter flavoring. Okay, one and a quarter cups. There we go. Now I mix in my dry ingredients first. I don't do a different bowl. Just get them all evenly distributed. Then I put in my shortening. You can use a pastry blender if you want, but I just use my hands and I grab some flour and my shortening and I just see how I pinch it until my flour starts getting worked in to my shortening and I make, see these little crumbles? You're going for the little crumbles, okay? So we're just gonna get all that shortening worked through. Now, this pie crust is actually very easy. People don't think pie crust is easy to make, so that's why they buy the homemade pie crust, but it really is pretty simple. Now, it does like take some practice to make the super pretty tops and all that, but just think about it, guys. A pumpkin pie from a bakery is 20 to $25 now. That is absolutely ridiculous. And the ones in the grocery store, I'm sorry, they just taste nasty. So think, if you were to make 10 pies all in a row, even with all the ingredients that you would be able to eat because I have never had a pie that has been just totally failed. See how quick and easy that is? It's worth the time to practice making pumpkin pies, so between, or any pies. So between now and January, just make one pie a week and just get your technique down and then you never have to buy a pie again. All right, 
Now we're going to put in our egg. There we go. And cold water. I just put some in the cup and then I just take my tablespoon and my vinegar, which is right here. I keep my vinegar for baking in a little bottle. Okay. Then I'm just going to put in my water and I start with three tablespoons, okay? And then my tablespoon of vinegar. Now, just going to stir this gently first, just to get it kind of incorporated. Okay, you wanna see how much more water you're gonna need. So that's a little bit on the dry side. See how it's not quite totally coming together? So I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of water. And now I'm gonna get my hands in and start kneading. Okay, so you're just gonna go grab down to the bottom. Now, you don't wanna knead this to death, but you do wanna get everything incorporated. Now, I'm gonna add, your climate also affects your baking like this because I live in a very dry climate here in Wyoming. When I was in Kansas, it was more humid, and so it does affect your baked goods. So don't panic if you need to add more water if you live in a cl drier climate, or if you live in a humid climate and it's just a dry day, it's okay. You just wanna keep adding until you just get your pie crust to come together. Now it's coming together, so. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour and I'm gonna put my crusts. <clears throat> now this makes three pie crusts, okay? And then I'm going to bring it all together. Okay, now that's enough flour. Don't want it to get too dry. And get it all together. Okay, all incorporated, just like so. Now, if you guys have problems with your pie crust, on page 306 right here, we have a whole list of pie tips to help you if you have problems or if you want to make different pies, okay? So now I'm gonna lightly flour my uh, countertop here, and now I'm going to divide this into thirds, just estimate. This is, oh yeah, wow, I really estimated well there. Good grief, Dora. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna set those two to the side for my apple pie, and I'm gonna use this one for my pumpkin. And then, just going to start rolling. Flip it over and get a little bit of the flour. Pick up a little bit more flour. Try to make it more of a circle here. Now, then what you wanna do is you wanna take your pie tin and measure and see. Not quite there yet. There, I think we're there. Now, what I love is this scraper, and I just go under, and first of all, I loosen, loosen it all, okay? Then fold it in half, and then fold it in quarters, then pick it up, and put it a quarter of your pie tin, and then the rest. Now, if you have little holes because you didn't get it perfectly circle, which I don't ever do, I take and just fill it in. So just fill in your little holes there. Nobody is even going to notice. And I should have made it just a little bit wider actually. So what I'm gonna do for this one is just piece it together. Now, mom is the expert pie 
maker in our family, so she's the one that usually does it. Mine tastes fine, but I just don't have the patience for that. So I just go in and piece it together. I needed to fill in a little bit because I ran out of dough, so I just took a piece from my apple pie. It'll be fine. Then after I got it all around, I'm just taking my thumbs, pushing them together, see? And it just makes a little ridge. And it just makes it a little bit prettier. Just like so. So now for my pumpkin pie, I'm gonna pre-bake my pie crust for one to two minutes for just to get it started. That will keep the crust from getting soggy. Now, what I really love about this thing is, look at this. This is like the easiest cleaning tool. Your countertop messes. Isn't that great? Yes. See, now I just have a little bit to clean up. Now, I use the same bowl for my pie that I did for my pie crust. And what I do is I just go in, scrape it. I don't even wash it. I just scrape the edges. There, that'll be fine. Okay, now for our pumpkin pie. Now, you wanna make sure you get pure pumpkin, not the pumpkin pie filling. The pumpkin pie filling has added water and spices and it doesn't taste near as good as good old homemade pumpkin pie. You want pure pumpkin. Now, this is the extra large can, so I only need half of this can. Isn't that interesting? It's down to 29 ounces instead of 30. Oh, those sneaky little turkeys. Okay, so just half a can. I just estimate, oh, yum. Oh, this smells so good. And then your two eggs. Whoa, oh my, oh dear. All right, then your sugar. And then we have our salt. Now, I just take a one teaspoon, and if I need a half a teaspoon of salt, I just put half in there. That way I'm not getting a whole bunch of measuring spoons dirty. So now my cinnamon, I need a teaspoon. There we go. No, it wasn't completely full to the top because some was spilling over. And then ginger. And then cloves. And then we're using our evaporated milk, not sweetened condensed. Sweetened condensed has extra sugar, evaporated does not. And you need to shake it really good because it does settle. So see how it says shake well? Listen to the instructions on the can. This is 12 ounces, right? Yeah. <laughs> I second guessed myself for a moment there. Okay. So now we're gonna get this all mixed together. Oops, hold on, I forgot my pie crust. Let me grab it out of the oven. Okay, perfect. I'm just smashing the lumps along the side of my bowl there. Then we're just going to pour it into our pie crust. Oh, yum. Okay, then we're gonna put it in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes. And then we're gonna turn it down to 350 for 45 minutes. Hmm. That smells like Thanksgiving. Can you see the rabbit under my arbor there? Oh, he's, he's looking for his Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, now 
we're going to test the pie. Oh my, that looks delicious. Take a knife, stick it in the center. See how it comes out mostly clean. I'm gonna leave it about five more minutes and then I think it'll be done. <laughs> Another way to save on Thanksgiving dinner is you don't need so much whipped topping or whipped cream. If you just get one container of whipped topping, you don't need the entire container for one pie. I know some people like it that way. This is the way I prefer to eat my pumpkin pie. But if you want to save money, one container of Cool Whip will work for two pies. On that note, Cool Whip is a whole lot cheaper than canned or homemade whipped cream. I know it doesn't taste the same. I totally get that. But if your goal is to save money, the Cool Whip or the whipped topping actually is what you should be getting is about 99 cents compared to four or five dollars of using actual whipping cream or whipped cream. All right, there is our pumpkin pie. I'm not gonna test it again, cause I know it's done, but, and if it jiggles, see how it's not jiggling? That's how you know it's done also. This Thanksgiving dinner only cost me $30, pie, salad, everything, and that is not on sale. If I would have bought everything on sale, I probably could have done it for around $20 to $25, probably closer to $20. And what's even better is it's actually only costing me about $10 to $15 for the meal because we're gonna have so many leftovers that those are gonna be other meals then. So Thanksgiving is the cheapest dinner of the year. All of these recipes are in our Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 1. If you're gluten-free, dairy-free, all of the recipes are in our gluten-free, dairy-free edition. And for both of these, regular Thanksgiving and gluten-free Thanksgiving, go to the link in the description below and you will find all of these recipes. For kids, get some craft paper or we buy this from the newspaper. Yes, they still make newspapers nowadays. And this is the end of the roll on newspapers and cut it so that it fits your table now this entire roll right here you guys see this roll it was about I don't know, what two or three size two or three times this size mm -hmm. and it was five dollars at our newspaper to buy this and so we use that for our shipping paper for those of you who don't know how to do corners fold down push and over and there we have a nice neat corner now we're gonna set this up so the kids can color during Thanksgiving or while they're waiting before. So for the broccoli salad, we're gonna cut our broccoli into bite-sized pieces. And I leave the stems like this. I like them, some people don't. Okay, then we have our onion. I'm not gonna use all of that. Just cut it in half, just make little onion pieces. There you go. Then we've got our raisins. We have our mayonnaise. And a small amount of sugar. And seasoned salt. Then we just stir this all up. Now, it's best if this can sit for about an hour or so, 30 minutes or an hour, to let all the flavors come together. If you want to make it ahead of time, you can mix everything and just add your mayonnaise and sugar later if you want. All right, there we have our broccoli salad. Oh, yum. That is so good. If you need more space to put food for your Thanksgiving dinner, take your ironing board, set it up, 
put a nice tablecloth on it. Then you have more countertop space to set some things. Now, I know ironing boards are wobbly. I get that. Here's a couple of solutions. First, you can put bricks on the bottom, have one going this way and one going this way, so it will stabilize your ironing board. It won't be a toe stubber? Huh? It won't be a toe stubber? It shouldn't be a toe stubber if you pull in the bricks in close. You should be able to pull them in. I would hope, I would hope you wouldn't stub your toes on there. I mean, if so, wrap it in fabric or something if you want, but I don't think they should. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you were right here, you could, but what I would do is pull the bricks up really close. We'll go out and get, we'll go out and get some bricks and test. Okay, we'll make sure they can't. No, no you're use right. Use a sandbag. Use a sandbag. You are right. Most people don't have sandbags, though. That's because you're not professional. Big okay, lovey. that's well, that's true. Well, okay, what else would be heavy that we could put on there? Would... Let's think. Oh, you could take a sock and fill it with rice or beans, and put it on there. Something like that would work. I'm trying to think of something else, but my brain is. Or you could just take a bag of rice or a bag of beans and set it on there. That would look a little tacky, but you know, wrap it in a Thanksgiving, wrap it in a Thanksgiving color napkin, wrap a bag of rice or beans in a Thanksgiving color napkin and set it on the thing there. That would take care of the toe stubbing, right? Sure. It should. It should. Yeah. That should be fine. The other option is to set it up against your countertop and then it's not going to be as wobbly. So if you have space around your countertop or at the end or whatever, then this way it'll stabilize your ironing board. And also, if you're worried about your ironing board being too wobbly or whatever, just put lightweight things in bowls that aren't breakable on here. Like I wouldn't put my good china, as mom says, on here or anything like that. But I have no problem putting these things on there because they're light enough and I'm not gonna break anything. I'm okay if it spills. Now. On to the sweet potatoes. Sweet potato casserole recipe is on page 167. Now, I usually use canned sweet potatoes, but I realized I didn't have them. I took regular sweet potatoes that I had that I was just for eating and just cut them into pieces and put them in the microwave. Now you can see when the knife goes through, they are ready for your sweet potato casserole. Now, just cut off the little brown parts. I don't know why it does that, but they do. If you don't want those, which is fine. Sometimes those pop up. Okay, so now we're going to make our, this is sweet potato casserole. This does not have marshmallows. If you want, you could put marshmallows on top instead, but I've got my melted butter here. And then my sugar. You can reduce the amount of sugar if you want. My vanilla. Ooh, oh my. That sweet potato casserole is going to be having a little something extra in there. <laughs> and then, make sure that's not too hot. And then our eggs. I put the other ingredients in so that the butter doesn't cook my eggs because it cools them down. Okay, and then we're gonna mix all this together. And then we're gonna pour this over our sweet potatoes. Yum. Then we're going to take and put on our topping, our brown sugar. and our pecans. Now, you can reduce the amount of brown sugar or white sugar if you want. I find that it's a little sweet, so I reduce it just a little bit. Then I just added my flour, and I forgot to pre-melt my butter. Okay, so I'm gonna melt my butter real quick. Okay. Then I'm gonna pour in my butter. And I probably should have gotten a bigger bowl. This wasn't the best thing to do it in. So I'm an extreme minimalist when it comes to cooking. So anytime I don't have to make another dish dirty, I don't. But sometimes 
You just got to do it. Okay. Now we're going to get it all mixed in there. <clears throat> oh, yum. Okay. Then about a half an hour before you're going to serve dinner, you're going to put this in the oven. Put all your topping on top. Oh my goodness, yum. All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven. Okay, so I clean as I go, but I just rinse out my stuff if I'm gonna be using it again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now if something's stuck on there, <laughs> So, so I made 20 gallons of hand soap yesterday, and this is the leftovers that I'm using for dish soap. <laughs> We're going to have soap until we die. <laughs> All right, now our sweet potatoes are done. Oh my goodness, look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? The next thing is try to, to what, prevent catastrophes as much as possible. Use non-breakable cups you can get decorative ones if you want for thanksgiving i just didn't happen to have any use paper plates so that if they drop their paper plate or their cups it's not going to break anything cause a huge disaster i know moms who when kids would break something in the kitchen how do i say this politely dear they would completely flip out <laughs> scream and freak out and scream terrorize and... their kids by accident on Thanksgiving. Guys, do not do this. I know you're stressed out cooking Thanksgiving dinner and everything and all of that, but if you're sitting there screaming and yelling at your kids and your family on Thanksgiving because you're so stressed out that you don't want to take a few steps because everything has to be perfect and nice, stop doing that. Stop creating that stress for yourself and your family. Also, if your kids just hate turkey, ham, or whatever you're cooking for Thanksgiving dinner, just give them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes, most of the time I say kids should at least try one bite of everything. But you know, it's Thanksgiving. Give yourself a break. There are people who are way into their 50s still talking about how their mom was screaming at them at Thanksgiving. Stop the screaming. It's all about just having a nice meal together. Now, for giblet gravy, add water to your pan and then you're going to take your giblet packet here, tear it open, and you're going to put them in your water and you're gonna let this simmer. I just let it simmer all day on low until it's cooked. Gonna add more water. Okay, just like that. There we go. Now, what do I do with the gravy packet? I throw it away. This gravy is nasty. You don't want to eat this gravy. You want to eat homemade gravy, and I'm going to show you how to make it super yummy and easy. So there we go. Boom. I know. Isn't that wasteful? But that is nasty. Nasty. Don't eat packaged gravy or the packets either. Just make homemade gravy. It's super easy, guys. I promise. All right. Here's a little tip, guys. As you see, like I just got, because my hands were all filthy, just wipe your containers as you put them away. Then you don't have to do a big thorough cleaning and everything stays nice and neat. Here's another tip. I do not wash my measuring spoons. I just, if I want to, wipe them off and put them back. Mashed potatoes on page 161 right there. All right, now here's a little tip. Take a, we used to do this in the old days with newspaper and just throw the whole thing in the compost pile, but now most people don't have compost piles or newspapers, either one. Ah. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our potatoes and just peel them straight on this bag, then you can just gather the whole bag and put it in the trash when you're done.
then just take the whole thing and put it in the trash. All right, so now I'm going to rinse my mashed potatoes just like so and fill it with water. Now, the way mom does it, which I think is great, is she just cuts her potatoes in quarters like that, and then you don't have so much cutting to do. One time I was doing a radio interview, and I was talking about making mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness, that was 2003, that was 20 years ago. <gasps> that was 20 years ago, wow. When I said you boil them for about 10 minutes, the radio guy was like, 10 minutes? He said, I boiled mine for 45 minutes. I said, what? I said, well, did they turn out like glue? He said, yeah, they did. I said, yeah, when you cook them too long, it changes the starch and it turns into glue instead of mashed potatoes. He just thought that was the funniest thing. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe that was 20 years ago. Okay, got them all in quarters and now we're gonna boil these for 10 minutes. And if you need them to boil quicker, Put a lid on them. Oh, we have another visitor. Should we call that dinner? <laughs> Guys, for kids, use the small dessert plates. Look at, this is the regular Thanksgiving plate. I don't know, this has gotta be what, 13, 14 inches. This is the regular eight inch holiday plate, but this is the six inch dessert plate. Guys, little kids do not eat that much food. Let them just have one or two tablespoons of each thing they want on here and then get refills. It's perfectly fine for them to go back for more, but don't pile their plates high with food and then just throw it away because they're not hungry or it's too much food for them to eat or they don't like it. Now we're going to make homemade stuffing. Page 187, this is a kind of throw it together recipe. Guys, please do not be intimidated by the instructions. This is actually very easy. Okay, to start your stuffing, you're gonna take your sausage. I just use regular pork, mild pork sausage, and we're gonna fry this. While that is frying, I'm going to break up my dried out bread. Now you can just, if you ha are feeding way more people, just add more bread and another egg. If you want, you don't need to add more sausage, but you don't need to, this is not an exact recipe. This is a recipe that you can adapt. And basically, if you just need to double or triple it, just add extra bread and extra eggs. I mean, if you're cooking for 50 people or something, you could add more sausage. If you don't have dried out bread. Um, then put it in the toaster. But what I do is I just set my bread out the day before, or a couple of days before. This is a great recipe to use all those heels and everything. And then I just set it out and let it um, dry out. You could also put it in an oven on low, like 300 degrees, 250 for, I don't know, a few minutes, 20 minutes maybe. I don't know how long it would taste, take to dry it out. Now I'm making a half recipe because there's just four of us for tonight's Thanksgiving dinner on November 7th. <laughs> See, that's the great thing about being a cookbook author. You can just have multiple Thanksgiving dinners. <laughs> We're giving thanks all the time. Yes. And I don't have an onion. Okay, so I thought I had an onion and I forgot it. I am not running to the store to get an onion, so I'm just gonna put some onion powder in here and call it good. But if you have your onion, just fry it with your sausage. Now to check your potatoes, put your knife in and if it goes in easy, they're done. And see, my knife didn't go in easy, so we got about five more minutes. Okay, I've got my bouillon cube in my turkey broth. I just drain the turkey broth off of my turkey there. Then I've got my butter. The broth is warm, so my butter should just go ahead and melt. And then I've got my salt and my pepper. Just 
just like so. Okay, then I'm gonna pour this over my crumbs. I forgot I'm making a half batch, shoot. Okay, that's fine. Then I take my eggs. Okay, now I'm making a half batch, guys. Pour my eggs in. Sage. Ooh, where's my sage? Well, there's parsley. There's rosemary. There's sage. Thank I you. knew it was near the parsley, the rosemary, and the thyme. <laughs> Aren't you funny? <laughs> okay, so there's my sage. <laughs> all right, I'm going to mix all this together. I used to never like stuffing, and now in my old age, I actually like stuffing. I'm rather shocked with myself. Now I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna grab my baking dish. I was trying to think there, I hesitated. Did you see my hesitation, dear? And then I spray my baking dish there. All right, there's my sausage. This all stirred together. And then you can add, now grandma adds a box of croutons or um, stuffing, <laughs> pre-made stuffing mix, which is pretty funny. I don't, I just add extra bread. All right, and now we're gonna put this in the oven and bake it at 350. On the stuffing, you do not want to put this in your turkey. Do not put it in your turkey. It will cause food poisoning. Your turkey does not get hot enough in the center to kill all of the bacteria. So cook it separately from your turkey to avoid a trip to the hospital this Thanksgiving. Are these all in the same setting? Yes, they are all. Well, not this one. This one wasn't in the same setting. Elon, Elon, please, you can get us into space. Can you please get us a toaster that toasts evenly every time? Elon, I am begging you, please. If anyone can do it, Elon can Elon do it. Elon can do it. Okay, to check your mashed potatoes, take your knife and go in. And are they ready? Yeah, they're ready, okay. Now we're going to drain the mashed potatoes. I love this pan because it has a strainer lid. I think that's fabulous. Okay. This is the secret ingredient that makes our mashed potatoes better than any mashed potatoes you've ever eaten. It is sugar. And you don't need a lot. Just about a tablespoon is all you need. But that little tiny bit amount, I don't know what it does. Mom discovered this one. It brings out the flavor of the potatoes. You don't taste the sugar. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Okay, now if they're looking a little dry, just add a little bit more milk. I forgot to say I added milk earlier. If you have lumpy mashed potatoes, it's because you didn't cook them long enough. So if you want lumps in your potatoes, cook them slightly less. If you don't want lumps, cook them the correct time in the cookbook. Or when a knife goes through easy in your potatoes.
All right, there you have perfectly fluffy mashed potatoes. Now you can add your butter now if you want. You could add sour cream, you could add bacon bits, you could add cream cheese, you could add cheddar cheese, any of those flavorings that you would use for baked potatoes, you can add to your mashed potatoes. And you know what else is really good? A dollop of bacon grease. Oh, that makes it taste really, really good. Now, if your turkey is just so tender and delicious that you don't realize you have so much juice and it spills over in your oven, and then when you pull your turkey out, you dump it on the floor, like I did here back in 2011, <laughs> Yeah, I splatted the turkey all over the floor on Thanksgiving. I just scraped up the turkey that was on top that hadn't touched the floor, and we just ate that for Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we are waiting for this to finish. Let's take a look back at 2019 when my Thanksgiving dinner was on fire. You get up and you see if your turkey's done. If your turkey's done, peel it off the bone save the bones for turkey stock later in the week. Just wrap it up in your pork. <laughs> Which thing is that? Um, it was the gravy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, so. This is not normal. It's the show that's <laughs> jinxing us. <laughs> What's that Just don't worry about it here. All right, so now. What are the next questions here? Ugh. Uh, <laughs> dear? Uh, I guess we'll just sing happy birthday. Check the biscuits. I did. Did I not no. get the biscuits out? Holy cow, what? <laughs> Is that the stuff that's on the bottom? Yeah, that's the stuff from me. Oh no. Okay, open the windows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, we geez. actually have a fire. So that's um, the stuff that boiled over from the... Okay, hold on. The stove is on fire. Dave, what? you know, why don't you get this on YouTube since the stove is on fire? There it okay. is. So let me think here. How should we do this? You're just cooking it more, don't worry. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of live uh, video, guys. Here, should I turn it off? Turn it off, yeah. Jamie's salt puts out fire. Well, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Join us next time for another great edition of Fire Alarms. <laughs> Please buy our book. I just don't even house. know what to say. How do we stop them? Oh. How do we stop them? Okay, we know the smoke detectors work. This is good. Gina's probably on her way over for her dinner. She's right here. She's, she's right here. <laughs> so Gina's on. I'm like walking up. Ceiling fan. Come on, on the shelf. I love it. So anyway, Gina, who gets to eat this dinner? Oh my gosh, I should probably come back. Um, well, it's gravy. actually mostly done. Wow. You can go this way. Too. I just oh, didn't get the... So, <laughs> the gravy boiled over, and uh, then I had the pie boil over. Okay. This so, an anyway, uh, that's how you do it. I don't even know what to say. Hey, it's real life. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Okay. So, let me see All right, dinner's done. <laughs> I actually did save the dinner. All right, dear, are you ready for the great unveiling? Yes. Oh, no smoke. Thanks. <laughs> I would hope not. Oh, man, okay. it smells great. Now, you can tell your turkey is done because, see, it just falls apart. If it's falling apart like that, it is totally done. Okay, so there is our moist flaking off the bone turkey. Oh, mm. that was really good. Have a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving for the kids. Guys, 
The kids would love a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, especially if they watch it every year. How'd you know it was Charlie Brown? Because I've seen um, the Thanksgiving Charlie Brown episode where they where they put popcorn, jelly beans, toast, and pretzels. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> It's yummy? I do one. Yeah. <laughs> Just give them a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving and let them enjoy it. Or the gravy. What I do is I go in and I take as much as I can first. And then I'll pour the rest off, but it's easiest to do it this way. Okay. Now, obviously, I still have more gravy. It's just us tonight, so that's all I'm going to make for the gravy for tonight. So we're going to turn it on for boiling right there. Putting my cornstarch or flour or arrowroot, whichever you want, for thickener. Going to add some water and stir until your cornstarch is all dissolved into your water. So then we're going to add our cornstarch water. And I'm going to add salt. Now we're going to bring it to a boil and then we're going to test it and see. Now you can see here while this is coming to a boil, our giblets, if you want giblet gravy, my family doesn't like it except for me, then cut this up with an egg in your gravy and then you will have giblet gravy. All right, oops, I got a couple of pieces of turkey in there. That's okay. Now be careful because as you saw in my video when Thanksgiving was on fire. <laughs> Gravy can boil over really quick. So I um, usually stand and watch my gravy so it doesn't boil over. All right, so while my gravy is coming to a boil, hot, 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 I am plating the turkey. Jack keeps saying all of his friends at school keep talking about all the dry turkey for Thanksgiving and he's like, I know this cookbook. I know this turkey recipe. You should check it out. Okay, now come here, let's check. So there's our gravy and it's getting all nice and thick. I ran out of cornstarch, but okay. Now this is where you're gonna have to taste test it to see if you got enough salt. Yeah. Oh man, I'm almost there. Mm. Oh my goodness, this is so stinking good, it's not even funny. Perfection. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Okay, our gravy is done. Now, I could thicken it a little bit more. I ran out of cornstarch, it's fine. I like it that thickness. We're gonna put the rest of our turkey on the plate. Now, if you want, some of the turkey breast, just dig down here and see you can get that whole chunk out. Oh. Okay. See, I've let my oven go. I did it on purpose because I wanted to show you this. This is the best invention ever. It's a liner for your oven. I will leave the link in the description below. But if you have a pie boil over, <clears throat> right here. You? Who you? Who me? Who me? Would yeah. I let a pie boil over? Let's see. Does this bring back any memories, dear? Yep. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. There it okay. is. Okay, now watch this. Scraping away, it's just coming all off. You might need to let the bigger chunks soak for just a minute, but it's not anything huge. I know, let that go down the drain. Look at that. Woo. My love. Then, if the chunks are too big, you can just peel them just like this. 
need to clean the oven in the sink instead of in the oven. Oh, you're so brilliant, yes. Yeah. Okay. Take your back and your neck. go all nice and clean I just let it dry while I'm wiping off the oven door but that saves a lot of work now you could also line it with aluminum foil I know this is controversial for years I just lined the bottom of my oven with foil some people say oh that throws the oven temperature off other people say oh it's no big deal I asked pistol our favorite appliance repair man and he said he didn't really think that it actually mattered. So I will trust my appliance repair guy. And I have used this for, oh my goodness, I've probably used these things for 15 or 20 years. And I've never had a problem with my oven temperature. Where do you get them? The link is in the description below at Amazon. All right. Here is Jack already dug into the potatoes for an after school snack. Here is Thanksgiving dinner. How were the mashed potatoes? Oh dear, they were very good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, that is Thanksgiving dinner. It is actually quite simple. It took me about and not even quite an hour to do all this in person. All these recipes are in the description below. Please go watch this video next. Visit us at livingonadine.com. All right, are you ready for dinner? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Should we dig in? Perhaps. Well, we already have. <laughs> you already have. <laughs>